Just a word about workshop objectives. This is also somewhat of a, a broad outline of what we're going to be doing in the next two days. Um, we're going to start with a review of lessons learned over the last hundred years of respiratory protection. It might come as a shock to a lot of people that actually uh, respiratory protection and uh, an organized focus on the safety for this aspect in uh, the workplace has been part of uh, the federal government for quite a while, and we are going to uh, hear a review of that um, in terms of a way for us to set the context for um, the challenges that we're going to try to undertake in the next couple of days. Uh, next, we're going to explore current respiratory protection needs and the risks for uh, non-traditional worker groups, which I'll talk about in a minute, and for public users. Uh, and finally, looking at research gaps and understanding um, what the respiratory protection needs might be for these two groups of uh, potential users of uh, respiratory protection and also other types of protective devices um, in addition to respirators. Next slide. So after we have identified what the needs are and the risk uh, assessment for these user groups, then um, we will turn to uh, in the second part of the workshop on um, reviewing what current practices are for respiratory uh, protection approval. And we'll talk about some of the details of that, uh, including conformity assessment to performance standards, and to see whether these approaches that we use for more traditional um, clearance of respirators for workplaces, for example, to see if those current approaches would still suit the needs of these non-traditional uh, workers and also um, of the uh, public users of respirators. And um, I, I think I pretty much covered all of that. Anybody who's interested in the uh, detail of these objectives, please uh, see the um, material that we sent to you when you registered. Uh, because there's a lot more detail there. Next slide. So here's the committee's approach. This was the organizing committee for this workshop. Uh, we struggled with what the term non-traditional worker means. It's a little bit of a long title. And um, one of the things we decided was we mean workers who function outside of a traditional respiratory protection program. Uh, it could span a wide range of professions and workplaces. Maybe one of the ways to think about this would be people in non-fixed work sites, people that don't have the uh, benefit of an organized respiratory protection program, but nonetheless need and uh, sometimes use uh, fairly frequently uh, respiratory protection. Um, I need to mention, I guess, the elephant in the room, which is COVID-19. Um, this uh, planning for this workshop began long before COVID-19. And so um, we need to mention that uh, it's not going to be the primary focus of the meeting. However, we are going to mention it, um, it especially in terms of uh, the current question about public use of uh, face coverings, uh, if not respirators. Uh, we are also going to be um, having a discussion of respirators and, like I said, this other type of face coverings, which right now, as you know, are not standardized, but um, we will at least uh, discuss uh, how we might think about uh, something that might be uh, more protective, but still not a respirator in terms of a face covering. Next slide. So the logistics, how uh, we're going to work uh, for the next two days together, um, as you know, it's a public two-day workshop. Um, attendees, uh, Q&As can be submitted via the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen, or for some people, it might be at the top of your screen. Uh, speakers and committee bio sketches on the workshop webpage can be reviewed by you for more detail. Um, and video recordings will be posted after the workshop. 